I've watched him grow old. I've watched him lose the vigor he has. He still remains the same can, determined as ever. Gets so sick, goes to ICU, puts on a vent, comes out, fights back. But age is taking toll on all of us. This country of Kenya should know that we are where we are because of a few people like Ken Matiba, Charles Robia, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, and other people that fought to give us the freedom that we enjoy and sometimes take too much for granted. So he had been brought in as a fake, on, as a, on a fake name because they had realized he was deteriorating in detention. Unlike the case of Charles Robia, where the injury occurred much after he was detained, uh, released, Ken Matiba's injury occurred in detention. And I got the history quite clearly. And the history brings tears to my eyes, as I confirmed also from the prison notes. Ken Matiba fell sick on a Sunday in prison. He complained of very severe headache, disturbed vision, he was vomiting. Despite that and being seen by government doctors, they saw him and they didn't recommend urgent care. As I give my evidence at the Justice Lenaola, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Ken Matiba was kept in his cell, bleeding in his brain. He was brought to hospital on Thursday in the night for a scan of the brain. Four days after the event had happened. Those 28 years that have taken care of Ken Matiba have been years of pain, knowing that this is a person who could, in his good days, have afforded any care anywhere in the world. He could have afforded anything he wanted. It humbles me to know that even us, <clears throat> the mighty can fall, but it gives me the determination to talk to people like you and tell them, please safeguard the freedoms we have. Ken Matiba has been in and out of the intensive care unit at the current hospital uh, now for the last two years. He gets better, but his lungs give way and he comes back again. As happened to all of us, one day, the curtain will come down, the lights will fade, and sunset will come.